بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم our first sum is over non negative integer n of zeta of 2n divided by n times n plus 1 the first step is to write 1 over n plus 1 as the integral x from 0 to 1 of x to the n everything that we have here is really valued and non negative so by Tonelli, we can do the operations in any order of our choice we interchange integration and summation zeta of 2n is equal to summation k from 1 to infinity 1 over k to the power 2n we have now the integral of the double sum n from 1 to infinity 1 over n then summation k from 1 to infinity x over k squared all to the power n let's do the summation first with respect to n we have n from 1 to infinity x over k squared to the power n x is between 0 and 1 k is a strictly positive integer the magnitude of x over k squared is less than 1 this summation here is minus the natural logarithm of 1 minus x over k squared the sum of the logarithms is the logarithm of the product we have len the product k from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x over k squared we multiply and divide by pi squared pi squared x is pi the square root of x all squared this product here is euler's product formula for the sine function specifically the product is sine by the square root of x divided by by the square root of x applying the logarithm we can split the integrand into three terms len sine by square root x minus len pi minus len the square root of x we have a minus sign here so we get this integral of len sine by the square root of x with a minus sign then we get integral x from 0 to 1 of len pi and this is len pi then we have len the square root of x which is one half len x this integral is carried out using integration by parts x len x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 1 when x approaches 0 from above we can use L'Hopital's rule you have len x over 1 over x the ratio of the first derivatives is 1 over x over minus 1 over x squared this is minus x which tends to 0 as x tends to 0 we are left with minus half the integral x from 0 to 1 x times the derivative of len x this integral is 1 this term is equal to minus 1 half the last step to obtain this sum is to evaluate this integral let's do the substitution y equal to pi the square root of x when x is 0 y is 0 when x is 1 y is equal to pi dx is 2y dy over pi squared this integral is equal to 2 over pi squared integral y from 0 to pi y len sine y if we change y to pi minus y the limits of integration remain the same this y becomes pi minus y also this y but sine by minus y is sine y this integral can be written as this integral plus that one divided by 2 when we add them we get by minus y plus y that's by divided by 2 we also have len sine y the integral of interest is 2 over pi squared times pi over 2 that's 1 over pi times integral y from 0 to pi len sine y sine y is symmetric about pi over 2 this integral is 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 if this integral is called omega if we replace y by pi over 2 minus y we get the integral y from 0 to pi over 2 len cosine y which is also equal to omega consider the integral y from 0 to pi over 2 len sine 2y the integrand here is symmetric about pi over 4 this integral is double the integral from 0 to pi over 4 doing the change of variables z equal to 2y 2 dy is equal to dz len sine 2y is len sine z when y is 0 z is 0 when y is pi over 4 z is pi over 2 and this integral is exactly equal to omega rather than proceeding like this we can rewrite sine 2y as 2 sine y cosine y after splitting the integrand into three terms we obtain that the integral is pi over 2 len 2 plus omega plus omega then omega is equal to 2 omega plus pi over 2 len 2 omega is minus pi over 2 len 2 multiplying by minus 2 over pi we get len 2 the final result is len 2 plus len pi minus 1 half that's len 2 pi minus 1 half in the second problem we have a summation over non-negative integer n of the digamma function of n plus 1 half plus small gamma euler mascaroni constant divided by 4 to the n times n plus 1. the first step here is to rewrite the sum using the harmonic numbers the gamma function has the property that gamma of z plus 1 is equal to z gamma z the di gamma function is the logarithmic derivative of the gamma function this property becomes epsi of z plus 1 is equal to epsi of z plus 1 over z epsi of n plus 1 half is epsi of n minus 1 plus 1 half plus 1 over this quantity here applying the same property again this di gamma function is epsi of n minus 2 plus 1 half plus 1 over this quantity we keep doing this till we get the di gamma function evaluated at one half then we have the fractions one over one over two plus one over three over two plus one over five over two all the way to one over two n minus one over two this is the sum k from one to n two over two k minus one this sum here is double the harmonic number h two n minus h n two h two n is two times the summation k from one to two n one over k h n 
is summation k from 1 to n, 1 over k. This first sum can be split into the odd and even terms. We get the sum here plus 2 summation k from 1 to n, 1 over 2k, which is exactly h of n. Di gamma n plus 1 half is di gamma of 1 half plus 2h 2n minus hn. One way to obtain di gamma of 1 half is to use Gauss di gamma theorem. When p is equal to 1 and q is equal to 2, we only have these two terms. The result is these two terms with q equal to 2. That's minus gamma minus ln 4 or minus gamma minus 2 ln 2. The numerator that we have here is 2h 2n minus hn minus 2 ln 2. Now we have three sums, summation n from 0 to infinity, 2h 2n divided by 4 to the n times n plus 1 minus summation n from 0 to infinity, h of n over 4 to the n times n plus 1. Lastly, we have minus 2 ln 2 summation n from 0 to infinity, 1 over 4 to the n over n plus 1. In this sum, change n to n minus 1, we get summation n from 1 to infinity, minus 2 ln 2 over 4 to the n minus 1 times n. This is 8 ln 2 times minus sum n from 1 to infinity, 1 over 4 to the power n divided by n. This sum here with the minus sign is ln 1 minus 1 over 4. This sum is equal to 8 ln 2 between brackets ln 3 minus ln 4 or 2 ln 2. To obtain the other two sums, we obtain the generating function for hn divided by n plus 1 and that of h2n over n plus 1. We then replace the variable by 1 over 4. The generating function of hn is summation n from 1 to infinity, hn z to the n. We can also start from 0 because h of 0 is equal to 0. We can take one set outside. hn is equal to hn minus 1 plus 1 over n. This side here is z times the generating function itself. We also have summation n from 1 to infinity, z to the n over n. This is minus ln 1 minus z, where the magnitude of z is less than 1. We can move this to the other side. Generating function times 1 minus z is minus ln 1 minus z. The generating function is minus ln 1 minus z over 1 minus z. Let's integrate both sides from 0 to u. For the power series, we integrate term by term. We get summation n from 1 to infinity, h of n over n plus 1, u to the power n plus 1. The antiderivative of this function is 1 half ln 1 minus z squared. When we use the limits of integration, we get 1 half times the square of ln 1 minus u. We can use this result to evaluate the summation here. What about the generating function of the harmonic number h2n divided by n plus 1? Let's go back to the generating function of the harmonic number hn. Take the generating function, multiply by 1 half. Take the generating function after replacing z by minus z. Also multiply by 1 half. When we sum, we get summation n from 1 to infinity hn 1 half z to the n plus 1 half minus z to the n, which is 1 half z to the n between brackets 1 plus minus 1 to the n. This bracket here is equal to 2 if n is even, 0 if n is odd. The odd terms disappear, and we end up with summation n from 1 to infinity h 2n z to the 2n. This sum is equal to this function of z. If we want z to the n rather than z to the 2n, we replace z by its square root. We obtain that the generating function of h 2n is this function of z with z replaced by z to the 1 half. We do the same step here, which is to integrate from 0 to u. Before doing the integration, let's obtain the antiderivatives of these two functions. If we execute this one, do the change of variables u equal to len 1 minus the square root of z, which means that 1 minus the square root of z is e to the u. This becomes e to the u. The numerator is u. z is 1 minus e to the u all squared. So dz is 2, 1 minus e to the u, e to the u times minus 1. This term and that term go away. We can use the minus sign to write this bracket as e to the u minus 1. We have two integral of u e to the u minus 1. We can split into two integrals. Minus 2 integral u du, that's minus u squared. In terms of z, this is minus the square of the logarithm of 1 minus the square root of z. We also have two integral u e to the u du, which is two integral u d e to the u. This is two u e to the u minus integral e to the u du times 2. We have 2u e to the u minus 2 e to the u. Replace e to the u by 1 minus the square root of z and u by the natural logarithm of 1 minus the square root of z. This is the antiderivative. For the other integral, it's almost the same steps. It is just that in the final result, those minus signs are replaced by plus signs. Now we integrate from 0 to u. 
integrating this side term by term, we get summation n from 1 to infinity, h to n over n plus 1, u to the n plus 1. We then sum these two results and multiply by minus 1 half. Evaluating at 0 and at u, we get this result for this generating function. We started evaluating the sum by rewriting the digamma function in terms of the harmonic numbers. We obtained three sums. One of them was directly related to the expansion of len 1 minus z. The other two sums are a special case of these two sums when u is set to 1 over 4. We get our results in terms of len 2 and len 3. Adding everything, we obtain the desired outcome. 